can't tell if anybody's here yet. Go ahead and comment if you're here so I know who's watching. We're going to ice cupcakes today, and I know some of you picked up cupcakes and icing from me yesterday, so you have a piping bag, you have a cupcake tip. Some of you may not, and that's okay. You can use what you have at home, or you can just watch along with me, make your cupcakes and icing later, and watch this on replay. So, I'll give a few minutes for people to join in, and then we'll get started. live video. I've never done this, so they might have some technical difficulties. I've got my son Landon <laughs> checking for comments if anybody has any questions because I want you to feel free to ask questions as we go. I know this is not ideal for teaching you how to ice cupcakes, but I'm hoping this is this works for people. This is something I can continue to do each week. Um, for those of you who are new to the Sweet Shop by Beth or for watching videos or uh, being a member of my Facebook page, I also do Zoom baking classes, and I just started that since the whole quarantine thing. And so it's like a 30 minute class. You join me on Zoom, you pay a $12 fee, and we spend around 30 minutes online together baking something together, and then we log off before the, the product goes in the oven. So that's kind of how that works. And so if this works for you, if you like this interaction, you can also sign up for those. So anyway, let's get started. I have just a handful of cupcakes here of leftover batter that I had in my freezer. <laughs> and I've got just a traditional buttercream, but you can use your whatever favorite icing you have. Um, and I have a standard cupcake tip, which kind of looks like a large, they call it a star. I don't know if that's really correct or not. I, don't, I think you can see, yeah, you can see it through there. But it just looks like little claws. Like if you've ever seen those old school star tip cakes that have like the little, it's a larger version of that. And that's what you see a lot of cupcakes iced with. So, I made a few examples before we got on here. So, this one has your traditional cupcake icing with that tip, just some sprinkles thrown on. A word of advice, if you're going to do sprinkles, it's best to ice the cupcake and then immediately put the sprinkles on it before your icing kind of sets up and they don't stick as well. This one, I was trying to think of something you could do at home without having to have any kind of specialty tips. And so, I put white icing on here and then I had some lime green like sprinkles, the jimmies that you can get in the grocery store. And I just pressed it while the icing was still soft. So immediately after I iced it, I pressed it all over that to look like grass. And then these are marshmallows. And I'll kind of bring it so you can see it a little bit better. I'm not sure what you can see with the lighting in here. But I have a marshmallow just sitting on top that's his tail. And I've got two flattened marshmallows. I was flattened with my finger to be the little bunny feet so like his tail is popping up out of the grass. So this is very kid friendly, kids could do this. You don't have to have a specialty piping bag. That's perfect. So that's a good one for Easter. But honestly, I've got a few different tips, like cupcake tips I'm gonna show you, but let's start with our basic. So first of all, do we have any comments or questions? No? Okay, that's fine. So if you have a bag, or if you are at home and don't have a bag and you wanna use a large Ziploc bag, you can do that. You would fill it through the top, push all your icing to one corner, and then you would cut the end of your uh, bag off the corner off and if you have a tip you put it in before you put the icing in so I have these disposable bags that order them off Amazon it's amazing but you're gonna want to hold it towards the top so the icing doesn't come out the top and let's spin this around so you can see I'll pick, actually I'm gonna pick it up all right so you're gonna start in the middle with your icing tip and you're gonna circle around and if you feel like it's too hard to, to squeeze from here you can bring your hand down, just make sure it doesn't come out the top. So you're gonna go around, up, like a soft serve ice cream cone. And then I have a mixture of spring colored sprinkles and I'm just gonna pop those on. Perfectly easy, kids think it's fun. You can buy mixed sprinkles or you can make your own. So you can buy all different colored sprinkles and then put them in a bowl and just mix them up with your hand and you have your own specialty mix. So let's do another one like that. Again, you're gonna start in the middle, wrap around that center point, and then one more time. 
you can go as high as you want to, but I feel like this is the perfect amount for a ratio versus, you know, cupcake and icing. So there's that one. And on this one, I'm actually going to use some primary colored sprinkles in case you don't want all the pastels. Something like that. So it's really super easy. This is what you're going to see anywhere and everywhere. Do this a few times and you can totally figure it out. So let's do one of the little bunny feet. So again, I'm going to get my piping bag. I don't really care what it looks like. I'm not really going to spiral up. I'm just going to do more of a flat piping. And then here is my little ball of sprinkles. I'm going to just, not pressing hard, but enough pressure to make it stick. It covers the whole top. And then I've got some mini marshmallows. All right, so one is the tail. You're going to leave it just as is. And you're just going to push it down a little bit into the icing. The other two you're going to flatten out with your fingers. It won't be the perfect feet, but it'll be close enough. And then you're going to put them right in front of the tail. Again, you may want to push down a little bit so they stick. And then I had some little pink pearls that I used as like the little individual toes. You don't have to do that. But, so there's your little bunny tail and feet. Okay, so let's do something a little different. So not only do you think of bunnies and Easter eggs and all that kind of for spring, but flowers. And I know that many of you have probably watched online videos um, where they have, they call them Russian tips, and it looks like an individual flower coming out of the tip of each one. They come in sets of, I think, 12, and I know most people don't have these at home, but again, you can order these off Amazon. So I wanted to show you how those work. If anyone has, because when I first got these, I don't know, they're just different than other tips, and so it took me a while to get used to them. But for these, you can ice it with white icing and then pipe on top of it, but I'm just going to pipe directly onto my cupcake. And you're going to want to hold the bag, the tip, almost against the actual cake and hold it there for about a second and then start to pull up while you're still squeezing and let go. See, it makes like a tall, skinny flower. And you can do it all the way around. It looks like a little bouquet. It is so cute. You don't have to have specialty tips or all these different tips to make all these different flowers. Like I said, it comes in like a pack of, I think, 12. And it looks so cute. And go all the way around and then once you get done I'm going to show you without a specialty tip how you can pipe leaves around your bouquet all right so then you have a little bouquet of purple flowers so cute so you're going to take your piping bag and or ziploc bag and this is gonna be really hard for you all to see but what I've done is I've cut a V shape out of the back, I don't know if you can see that or not, but <laughs> I've cut a V shape out of my back, okay? So it looks like a, a V. So that's what I've done. That's gonna make a leaf, I promise. So then I made some green icing earlier. To fill a bag, if you are not familiar with that, you're going to grab hold around the middle of it and pull it over your hand. And it's gonna give you like a cup, like that. So, and your, but your hand is not gonna get icing on, obviously. And then you're going to scoop in directly into that cup you formed with your hand. Then unfold the top of your bag and push until you get to the end. And I'm going to pause. Do we have any comments or questions, Landon? Um, someone said a, a Russian tip. Is that what you said? Yes. And that sounds crazy. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But if you type that in on Amazon, you'll get a whole set of those things. Like that was just one of many that, that opens up. And it makes the cutest bouquet. Now they're small. They're not going to be a big Wilton Rose that you would see like on a wedding cake. But for cupcakes, they're absolutely perfect. Uh, Christy said Harley says hi. Hi, Harley. That is my niece. I'm glad she's watching. Okay. Anything else? We good? Mikey said... Up Landon. That's wow. Exciting. Thank you, Mikey. You're supposed to be talking to me, not Landon. <laughs> okay. So here we have, like I said, this was that V shape that I cut out, and the icing's almost at the end. So as you push it towards the end, again, I'm going to try to get close so you can see it. The point side down is going to go, so it's going to be like this, like a, almost like an arrow. Point side down, and you're going to squeeze and pull back. See, it looks like a little leaf. And you can do that. The different spots around your bouquet 
and that's going to look like leaves on your bouquet all the way around. And you can even do some in the middle. Super, super easy. Now, for those of you obviously you don't have Russian tips, like the bouquet tips sitting around your house, I also wanted to show you, with back to the basic cupcake tip, how you can do a simple flower and do the leaf, and it still looks super cute. And this is actually a really common thing you see a lot, because it looks a little bit formal. So you're gonna go back to your basic cupcake, back to your basic tip, and starting in the middle, wrap around, but you're not gonna pile it up. You're gonna stop. So it gives you, sorry, the lighting's bad. You can see that but it gives you a swirl without the big pile up. so you you want to see that center point you don't want to cover it up so you're gonna do that then you're gonna go back and get your leaf your leaf bag point side down again and right where the two meet you'll see a point in your icing where you pull it away that's where you're gonna pipe one leaf or two I'll put two and now I like to go back and do a few like you can get these large pearl sprinkles I like to put them in the middle these look I don't know, dressier, I guess, if you're, <laughs> I've done these a lot for bridal showers in different colors. You can do this in pink or whatever, lavender or whatever, and it is a little bit dressier version of a flower. All right. So, I also wanted to show you if, um, this is chocolate, I've got chocolate icing, but, and there is no tip in this bag either. So, we're just going to cut the end off and make one large circle, and I wanted to show you how to use that. I want it to be a fairly large circle. You don't want it to be really small. So I'm going to cut about here. Okay, and that's a pretty good size opening if you can tell. Push my icing down. Now, if you ever make chocolate icing at home, mine always feels a little stiffer because of that extra cocoa powder, so you may have to squeeze a little harder or add a little bit of extra milk or water when you're making it. Okay. So I want to show you a couple different ways to do this. So if you just have a basic Ziploc bag with a hole cut out, something like this, you're going to start in the middle. You're not going to swirl. You're going to squeeze. You want to form a big, like, dollop. Very, 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 very basic. And again, this is where you would cover with your sprinkles. That looks like a very homemade cupcake to me, but it looks delicious because it's chocolate icing. So that's a really easy one you can do. I also... I want to show you how you can spiral it up with, with the round tip if you want to. With this being chocolate, it's going to look like a poop emoji. So I apologize for that. <laughs> but the kids will find it funny. So again, you're going to start in the middle. You're going to squeeze the whole time. Bam. Poop emoji. So, and you can buy those little candy eyes and put on there. And it literally is a poop emoji. But anyway, so you can still spiral it up. If you do this with white icing, it obviously doesn't look like that. You can still grab your sprinkles and throw on there, super good. This tip, or this way of icing, and without a tip, but just a round shape, is actually really good if you're gonna do a drizzle of something, like ganache or some kind of raspberry syrup or something, I think it looks the best on this. It kind of falls down all the little grooves that the round tip makes. It looks really yummy. Okay, let's do, let's do a rose. Now I know most of you, again, probably don't have this at home, this is a large rose tip. Your average rose tip that you buy, like a petal tip, is a 104 is the number on the side of it. This one is a 127 if you buy the Wilton brand. It's just a big version of that. Now, this is something you could also, I, I've not tried this, but I think that you would easily cut this from your own piping bag or a Ziploc bag. You're just gonna cut it at an angle. The difference is, in the tip version, there's one end that's a little fatter. You're not gonna get that with a Ziploc bag. So it may not be perfect, but. Basically, it's flat and almost like a really skinny teardrop shape. So the fat end is going to go towards the bottom of your cake or cupcake, and the thin end, the skinny end, is going to go up, like facing you, because that's going to be the top of your petal, and you want it to look as thin as possible. So, for instance, on a cupcake, if you want a giant rose, again, fat end at the bottom, skinny end at the top, you're going to start in the middle and just spin your cupcake. Make one little... That's the center of your rose, and you're just going to build around it. And you kind of hold your tip and go up like a little arching, and you overlap each petal. I know this is hard to see. And you just keep going until you cover the entire top of your cupcake. Red rose. These are great for Valentine's Day. 
Again, go back to your leaf tip. Add a leaf. Make it look more rose-like. Perfect. So these look really, really good for Valentine's Day. And again, you can do them in various colors. You don't have to do a red or coral. Landon, do we have any other comments or questions? No questions. Okay. All right, so I've got a few more here. So, if anybody has any questions, please ask. I don't want to bore you to tears, so if you have a specific question, let me know. Okay, I'm going to go back to my basic tip, and we're going to do a little bit different. Let's do like that. I'm not even sure what you would call that. It kind of looks like little meringues to me, and you can cover the whole top of your icing. This looks really cute, or uh, top of your cupcake, this looks really cute if you have pastels. And you can do them in different colors and it looks like a, like a little unicorn thing. And then I like to add those pastel sprinkles and a couple of those big pearls. Super cute. Another thing would be to do a mix of the rose and the purple uh, Russia tip that I used earlier. So you could do small rows, like I'm starting on the side of the cupcake on purpose. Okay, I'm going to close off rows and then surround it with your little bouquet. And then grab your leaves. Okay. Oh, and then another option. Sorry, I like flowers on cupcakes. Another option would be go to go back to your petal tip, but do a flat flower on your cupcake. Hey, Rune. Sorry, I'm gonna have my son fix something for me. You hit that on my hit that button. Sorry, I got a notification on my phone. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna the fat part. You're gonna bring towards the middle, like lay it on its side. The middle of your cupcake and you're just going to do those arches that you did for the petal tip or I mean for the roses on the petals if you're going to keep it flat the entire time it's like you're doing I don't know whatever kind of flower that is just a flat flower and then you would get some kind of round tip or again the big sprinkles as your center on your flower easy peasy And then the last one I'll show you, and please ask me questions, but the last one I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with that round tip, the chocolate, and you can do it all in white. I like it to have two colors. A lot of times if I do marble cupcakes, I'll do some chocolate icing like this, like a big dollop, just on your base. And then I'll get my vanilla icing with the star tip and spiral on top. So it kind of mimics the, the marbling that you see inside the actual cake. So you do chocolate and white, and then you can get like a chocolate ganache or chocolate drizzle and drizzle it over the top. So, I hope these are things that you can do at home. I mean, obviously, this these tips, a lot of these tips can be bought even at Walmart. They have some Wilton items. I know you can get the parchment bags, or I mean the uh, piping bags. I know you can get the basic cupcake tip. I don't know about the other varieties of tips that they offer. Obviously, they have sprinkles there. Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Of course, they're not open right now. Um, but the, all those places you can get and you can also order it on Amazon and it really is perfect. And then as far as the buttercream, everyone has their favorite recipe of buttercream. Try out different recipes. Obviously lots of butter, lots of sugar, lots of vanilla makes a good icing, but try out a couple different ones. If you're going to do a lot of piping, like the flowers, you definitely want it to be a sturdier icing. So for instance, if you're just doing the butter, the the butter and vanilla version of a buttercream, you want to add maybe a little bit of extra powdered sugar to stiffen up your icing. Otherwise, it won't hold as good a shape when you go to pipe out those petals. They won't be as 3D. Is there anybody else? I'm trying to read the comments from my phone, but I'm kind of far away. Any other questions, Landon, or comments? People are saying they look delicious and <laughs> like you commented a poop emoji a while ago. Yeah. No and these really are not difficult at all. Like, so these, I mean, obviously if you're doing 200 of them for a wedding, it's going to take you some time. But if you're just playing around the house with your kids, you need something to do, like these days, um, you can definitely do these at home. I met a couple people before, like yesterday afternoon, and gave them some unice cupcakes and some, ice, some of my icing already in a bag. 
I, if I get a lot of response off this and a lot of people are liking it, I'll do it again next week. And for those of you watching today that don't have cupcakes and icing, you can pick those up for me the day before. I give you a dozen cupcakes. I give you two different bags, one with a tip, one without. And that way you can at least follow along somewhat throughout this process. Also, if you all will comment or message me, let me know what you thought, if you want me to do more of these, if there are certain things that you want to learn that I could do in a Zoom class that I could teach you in like a 30 to 45 minute section uh, virtually, I will be glad to do that. Um, since weddings have all been pushed back, I've got a little bit more time on my hands and I do like doing these classes. Um, I originally started some in-person classes before all this happened and those are on hold. And so this is kind of my only option to teach. So. If you want to learn more about cupcakes, if you want to learn about a cake, a cake is really hard to teach virtually, like icing a cake, but I will do my best if that's what you want me to do. Um, as far as the baking, we did a pound cake the last two classes I had online. I can do muffins. I think scones would be really good, but again, I'm worried you won't be able to see me as well. And scones have to be rolled out and cut a certain way and all that kind of stuff. So, but anything, I want to know. Just message me or comment on this feed. Let me know what you want to see, and I will love to do it. Um, as far as cupcakes go, if you are not a baker and it's, it scares you to bake your own cupcakes, my suggestion, my cheat, go to Walmart or Kroger and buy a boxed cake mix. I prefer Pillsbury if I'm using a box, but you can get what's your favorite, but don't necessarily follow directions on the back. Just use it for its dry ingredients. And whatever liquid it tells you to use, substitute for buttermilk, full fat buttermilk because it will make it a much more moist cake. And you can also um, add a little bit of sour cream to it. So when it calls for oil, lessen your oil a little bit, add yourself a spoonful of sour cream, that makes it a sturdier batter, easier to decorate, and then bake it at a little bit lower temperature. So for instance, if it calls to bake it at 350, maybe they only bake it at 325, it's gonna take longer, but it's gonna give you a more even bake. So when I first started baking, that's what I did. I didn't really know what to do. And so I started with that attempt. And it really does give you a good cake. Um, so try that and make it into your cupcakes. You should get about 20 to 24 cupcakes out of one box mix. Um, I would say, depending on what size your cupcake pans are. If at least 18, if nothing else. But And then your icing, like I said, you can do the butter, the sugar, the vanilla extract and water versus milk, whatever liquid you want to use and just stiffen it up with a little bit of extra powdered sugar. It's gonna be really sweet, but it'll hold up much better to your decorations. So please comment, let me know what you thought. I so enjoyed doing this, and my son Landon just had a blast, I'm sure. Um, but yes, I would love to do this again next week, and I would love to hold at least two more Zoom baking classes next week. So if you wanna sign up for that, please let me know. And another thing I'm offering right now, because I'm bored at home, because I don't have very many cakes, another thing I'm offering right now is I'm also doing this is totally free. I'm also sending out emails that have different recipes and live, like full tutorials where I'm videoing myself cooking. It's not just baking, it's also like dinner options. And so I've got a couple of different ones that are all coming out. They go out every Friday morning. If you would like to sign up for that, I just need your email address. Again, totally free. So let me know. Oh, and also follow me on YouTube. There's tons of cake videos on YouTube, tons, and cookie decorating, and a few of my dinner recipes are on there too. So thanks so thank you thanks so much for watching and follow my page. Bye. What? Oh, I, sorry, sorry. Lance says I have a question. Hold on. There's a lot of people saying you should do cookies for like a Zoom call or something because they want to learn cookies. Okay. And so someone else said royal icing. Okay. And then uh, someone said a seasonal cake roll. As well. Oh <laughs> yeah, a pumpkin roll. All time favorite. So here's what I think about that. As far as like the pumpkin roll, which is the one that I feel like I make the most of, especially in the fall, um, would have to be a two part call. So you'd have to watch me make the batter and you make it with me and then bake it. And then we'd have to pop back on because when it comes out of the oven, that is the most difficult part, rolling it up. The cookie. Now I could, that would also have to be a two part call because that you have to make the, the decorative cookie dough has to be made and set in the refrigerator for several hours. I usually let mine sit overnight before I roll it out. So, and then I could roll it out with you and cut it out, but then again, you have to bake it. So we might have to figure out a better way to do that one. Um, and as far as decorating your cookies, I don't see why we couldn't do that. You probably wouldn't see my face on the Zoom call. I'd probably have to angle my camera down on my hands because you really need to see the detail on that. Um, but I also have some YouTube videos of all those things as well. Um, what were the other questions? Oh, and regular cookie dough though, like if you wanted to learn 
a really good like oatmeal raisin recipe. That obviously could be done through Zoom easily. And then you would just bake it on your own. Any other last comments? No more questions, no. Okay. So, again, follow me on all the things. Let me know what you want to see in here, and I'll be glad to help you out. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today. This was really fun.